For most of human history, the sword was the warrior's most important weapon. The swordsmith's art was perfected early and barely changed for centuries. But Dan Watson is out to beat perfection with a blade which is harder, sharper, and deadlier than any created in the ancient world. The secret is a unique form of steel that is tough and flexible at the same time. So, how do they do it? Meet Daniel Watson. He's a master of the Japanese martial art of Tamishigiri. In 17th century Japan, this test of sword and swordsman was conducted on human cadavers and condemned criminals. These days, masters like Dan use logs of tightly packed rushes, or goza, to simulate the toughness and consistency of a real human body. And this is what Dan's sharpest blades will do to an arm, leg or neck. You can pick up a sword from Dan from his foundry here in Driftwood, Texas, but it will cost you as much as $22,000. That's because these are no ordinary swords. Dan's technique for making super steel blades begins with a piece of ordinary steel and a computer-controlled precision milling machine. Milling metal creates massive heat, so the steel is bathed in green coolant cutting fluid. This liquid both cools and lubricates the cutter head as it grinds the metal into a basic blade shape. But ordinary carbon steel like this is no good for Dan's purposes. It's too brittle and could break in a serious sword fight. Ping. To make the ultimate blade, Dan must turn this ordinary steel into a super steel, which is fantastically sharp, tough and flexible. The process begins with some time-honored techniques of traditional swordsmithing. In the heat of the forge, the blade enters a no-man's land between tough steel and molten liquid, a state known as solid solution. In this state, the blade retains its shape, but molecules within the steel are free to move around. The changing color of the surface of the metal tells Dan what's happening inside the blade. One of the things that's key in this process is the chemistry of the flame. We are controlling the chemistry of the steel through the chemistry of the flame. When the blade reaches this semi-fluid state, Dan is able to work on the steel using traditional blacksmith's tools. But Dan isn't just hammering the blade into shape, he's deliberately denting the edge. The hard labor is actually high science. Dan's beating these dents into the metal to shape the bands of hard minerals that run through ordinary steel, like grain through wood. As Dan hammers, the steel's grain shifts from straight lines to a swirling pattern, like the spiraling grooves inside the barrel of a gun. Now the energy from any heavy impact has to travel all the way along these swirls before the blade breaks. The overall breaking strength is roughly doubled because of the longer path the crack has to travel. But it's still not super steel. Now, Dan turns to some 21st century technology to push the strength of the blade far beyond anything his ancient counterparts could have achieved. After being superheated to 1,000 degrees Celsius, the blade is suddenly plunged into what's called a quench tank filled with icy cold water. That was what's called a flaming quench. <laughs> this is the hardening of the blade. But icy water isn't nearly cold enough for Dan. How hot the blade gets, how quickly it's cooled, and how cold it then becomes all determine how tough, flexible, and sharp the swordsmith can make it. So Dan uses a computer-controlled cryogenic freezing unit to tighten the steel's molecular structure. Over a week, the sword will be chilled to minus 184 and then heated to 232 degrees Celsius over and over again until Dan thinks the steel simply can't get any harder. What we're doing is we are combining classic hammer, anvil, fire and sweat with 21st century metallurgy combined to make a super sword. This is now a super steel.
After a dazzling range of decorative touches, including Dan's trademark dragon handle, the blade is finally ready. Today, the most important judge of the sword's quality is the customer. Getting his hands on a super steel blade is a dream come true for collector Tom Freeman. Now to test the high-tech metal on the would-be victim. Let's go cut something with it and try it out. All right. If you're game for it. This downward diagonal cut, or kesagiri, allows Dan to rotate his whole body, putting the maximum force behind the blade. Dan, as we said, is a past master of the deadly art of tamishagiri. That's your turn, Tom. Tom is more of a future master. But after several attempts under expert supervision, he finally harnesses the power of Dan's super steel. But this thing is li wickedly sharp. Tom loves his super steel sword. Let's just hope it doesn't cost him an arm and a leg.